Hey everybody, Dan Schinder here on Drum Talk TV at the Brooklyn Bowl, as you can see in Las Vegas with Blake Richardson of Between the Barry to Me. That's right, and we're gonna see them rock out tonight. And there's there's tons of footage online, but first of all, thanks for taking time out course, on a yeah. show day, which we know yeah. is not always easy. Yeah, it's a little hectic. It's a little hectic. Yeah, I, I like to help her out with the uh, with the crew as well, setting up. So that's cool. Pretty busy. Yeah, pretty that's busy. Cool. helps yeah. the day move. I know. As well, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. It kills the downtime. Yeah. And you yeah. mentioned you had a day off yesterday, which is great. We did. Yeah, I lost lost a good bit of money. <laughs> I, uh, I always set aside Welcome a little bit. Welcome to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It wasn't too bad. I, I, I set aside my allowed, allotted budget, and, and if I go past that, I'm running. So. That's hilarious. Uh, and animals as leaders are getting ready to sound check, probably, so we might get interrupted. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking to Matt, too. But um, if you're not familiar with Blake's playing, it's sort of, and I hope you don't mind me putting it this way, and then I want to bring up an interesting topic about progressive music. Blake's like what I would call part of the newer generation of a cross between progressive rock and maybe progressive metal. You know, there's a few things going on there. And as a good friend of mine, John Berger, great drummer, plays a lot of like Broadway show music, the actual shows and stuff, real hard gig. As he says, there's, there's no point in labels. And while that's true, I think it, it helps give context to some degree. I mean, if someone says it's progressive metal or progressive rock, well, you know you're probably not going to get hit with a Dixieland tune. That's true. Unless yeah. it's Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Or <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm curious, what, how would you describe the music that you guys play? Someone just landed here from Mars. They're not familiar with you. They're familiar with what genres are. What would you tell them? That's a good, that's a good question. I, I would say, just to make it simple, progressive metal. But mm -hmm. if we're one of those bands, it's interesting, we've evolved so much from record to record, and that's what kind of makes us a progressive band. Right. We change styles so frequently, and you listen to our first record, and you listen to our latest one, Coma Quintic, and it's drastically different. Drastically. Right. The first one's like way more metal, way, way more intense, and this one has, you know, a little bit more dynamics. It's very. It was an eclectic group of uh, influences right. so far for this record. And, um, but yeah, I'd, for someone who didn't know, the simplest way is to say progressive metal, but eventually I almost feel like it's borderlines on progressive rock. Too, yeah. Just like you said. And there's a fuzzy line there. There you know. go. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll talk up over the drums. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it. Um, so someone commented on our Facebook page today, as a matter of fact. Um, we did a post on the top 50 albums of progressive rock of the last 25 years, so since 1990. And I don't remember the gentleman's name, but he said progressive rock is from the 70s. What the is this? Yeah. <laughs> and it's an interesting topic because, of course, there's progressive rock now, but like, I'm 52. If someone says progressive rock, I think of, you know, the epic stuff, like Supper's Ready by Genesis, or yeah. Close to the yeah. Edge by yeah. Yes, or exactly. Tarkus by ELP, but yet I recognize that there's a lot of stuff out there that's today's progressive rock. So, mm -hmm. what, what, here's the question, what defines something as progressive whatever it's, progressive rock it's, it doesn't mean there's off time yeah it doesn't mean there's got to be a keyboard player that's <laughs> yeah, like what? such a good question because I, I honestly feel like the, the definition of progressive rock or progressive metal like it's sort of that's evolving as well in right. a weird way like there, there's these subgenres that get attached to what is coined as progressive in music today right um, but to, you know, I agree with you, like to me when I hear the word progressive, I'm thinking of like, you know, old Pink Floyd, Emerson Lake, Emerson Lake and Palmer, Rush of course, Genesis mm -hmm. and all that stuff. To me, I have a very like, not to split, old school view of like, yeah, that, 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 you know, that's that viewpoint. what it is too. Yeah, and, and, but that's me, I still, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly there, I feel like that's what progressive music is, and I guess we've kind of been dumped into that world because, I mean, I guess it's because we have such a eclectic group of uh, influences on our own music. Mm -hmm. It's very, there's lots of dynamics and there's lots of uh, mood changes, and I guess that's what coins us as a 
impressive. Right. And you do play with a lot of odd time signatures and you know, well, there's yeah. some music there that you can dance to it, but you might get hurt. Yeah. Oh <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I stay away from it. And yeah. I don't mean yeah. mosh pit. I mean just dancing yourself, trying to move to some of the time signatures. You know, yeah. Eleven seventeen is yeah, the exactly. easiest thing that exactly. to sway to. And I guess that you know the whole odd time signature thing that definitely is very uh, congruent with being a progressive band. Like yeah. That's just that that usually kind of those two things kind of coincide. But I wouldn't necessarily just because a band does something in five four or something doesn't automatically label them as a progressive right. band. But Absolutely. those things do kind of coincide. Yeah. I feel like for the most part. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And back in the seventies, I think one of the other qualifiers was. The band had to have at least a known piece of music that had a spacey element. Oh to yeah, it. like yeah, uh, you know, Definitely. there's no drums playing right here, and if yeah. they are, it's just cymbals, <laughs> chimes, mallets, yeah. and just some weird sort of passage. You know? Totally, totally. Whereas that that isn't necessarily on the punch list of what qualifies no, now as no. progressive. You know? <laughs> and I, I remember back then when people started calling Rush. Progressive, like with 2112 yeah. and Farewell to Kings. Yeah. And in my mind then, I kind of at first didn't see that as progressive. I saw that as just real fancy yeah. rock music and there were odd time signatures. But but now, yeah, absolutely that's progressive. See, exactly, but exactly, and that's what I mean. It's like that shows how the definition of prog evolves you right. know, over time. You know right. what I mean? Like at first you wouldn't really consider Rush, a right when they were coming out, a progressive band, but now they're hailed as like the prog yeah. band of like you know yeah. the past fifty years. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. So it's it's interesting. interesting. Who who are yeah. some of your influences? Where does what we see and hear come out of you? Um, not that you're not responsible. Yeah, for no, 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 hey, no. I've, that's what drumming's all about, man. You, you take the guys that you like and you you know steal little tidbits from them. I was into, from an early age, it was really weird, I was into Terry Bozio, he was like the first um, clinician, kind of virtuoso drummer I ever got into, but when I was really young, I was just like, I was into Nirvana and stuff like that, yeah. like Dave Dole, like he just ingrained into me, I guess, from an early age to hit hard and play fast. I'm but, curious, uh, what, what era of Bozio grabbed you first? Was uh, it the well, Zappa stuff? The, some of the Zappa stuff. <laughs> Like from an early age, because my parents were really into that. So I got my some of that dumped on me, and then, then I really got into, which was cool. But I really got into his like his solo work because I saw him at a clinic, and he just did this. Uh, he had these. They, they were basically like compositions of just drums that he would that he would record. I thought it was just cool. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So then Simon Phillips, those guys, oh, yeah, sounds like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, watch for play on Drum Talk TV. We're going to do a full length interview coming up soon. And uh, we'll have Matt up next. Lake Hill, join us. Great, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you.